that he talks about. Don't let the shame and the pressure of yesterday determine your tomorrow. There's real value and worth in who you are in Jesus Christ and how God sees you. Jesus' death and resurrection is the only remedy. And we have a future and a hope that is found in him. We're reminded of that because that is what our church is founded on. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. That hope and a future is found in Christ Jesus. And so in Philippians 3.14, where Paul is actually reminding us to press on towards the goal, I love this language, press on towards. There's energy and there's direction. There's energy because Paul knows the goal is Christ. And he's going to pour himself, all of his energy, everything that he is, everything that he is doing into knowing Jesus more and more. What's absorbing your time? What's absorbing your energy? It's a helpful example. Paul is trying to help us, remind us, there are things that are going to try and get our attention, but the worthy goal, the goal that he strives towards, the goal that we need to press on towards is that of Christ and the power of his resurrection. We should not let anything get our eyes off that prize. I remember learning to swim. And for a lot of us, that happened in the very shallows of a swimming pool, right? Or perhaps on a calm beach. And that's where I learned to swim. Calm beach. And all of my energy, all of my attention was on my father who was beckoning me to swim to him. From here to there, not too far, was what my father claimed. He said, if you swim to me, then you've made it. That's all you have to do for today. But what I didn't know was that my father, who had beckoned me towards him, would start backing off and backing off and backing off and backing off. And I'd stand up and go, hang on, you've moved. Lying, my father said, no. <laughs> we don't have a God like that. Isn't it amazing? Isn't that good to know? Not like my dad. Our Father in Heaven is so much better, He realises that it is difficult for us. So as He beckons us forward, He actually returns to us. He actually, Word of God says, as we step out towards Him, He steps out towards us. Completely the opposite. Yes, I'm getting help to my dad. But my father in heaven, who loves us knowing that there is some things that we can't do on our own. He reaches out towards us and plucks us up into his arms. And says, wow, you did it. Oh, you didn't go very far. You did it. And that energy of Paul is the same things. I quite, I quite like the phrasing of the message translation for this verse. <coughs> I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out for me also. Isn't that incredible? Doesn't that just cry of the relationship there? Can I also encourage you to embrace God's truth practically? Philippians 3.15 reminds all of us that whoever may be mature should take a view of these things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Paul here actually expects the readers of this letter to pursue Christ above all things. And believe so strongly that there is no room for excuse. Elsewhere in his letters, Paul remarks about how there may be disagreement among Christians. And how these things 
probably aren't as important, but he doesn't leave any room here and says that there is no alternative view to this. And if there is, Paul hopes that the Holy Spirit, God himself, would change their mind. Sometimes we can be like that, can't we? We can be so stubborn in what we think God is saying. But we've got to actually spend time in God's word, which renews our mind and corrects our thinking. Because sometimes it's stinking. Because, I mean, we already agreed that we're messed up, right? Or is it just me? That stinking thinking needs to be replaced with God's truth. Not just about me, but about everything else that is around about us. God's word is alive and active like a two-edged sword. Allowing freedom for us to be able to walk closer to Jesus. I love this whole idea in Deuteronomy 6-7 that it is not just our daily devotions, but also sitting down, walking around, lying down, getting up. It refers to every part of our daily lives we need to apply God's truth into. There is no area where it doesn't or shouldn't have influence. And the Holy Spirit will bring illumination from God's word to you. As you spend time with him, you become more and more like him. Amen? Amen. I've been spending time with my mum recently, and uh, I have stepbrothers, if you didn't know, I have three of them, and uh, my stepfather passed away recently, so I've got to spend a little bit more time with my mum, and my wife has actually described my language as quite ochre now, okay, because my mum is quite Australian, and so are my stepbrothers, and so my language has actually changed because of the people that I'm hanging around. It's the same with God and God's word. If you're hanging around God and God's word, your language, your behavior, everything starts to change. Isn't that right? And that's actually what we want. We don't want to become more Oka. We actually want to become more like Christ. Applying God's word practically into our lives. Can I also encourage you, as Paul encourages us, from his letter, to be led by others along the way. Philippians 3.17 says, Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, just as you have us as a model. Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. We talked about the importance of actually modelling Christ to others. But also we need Christ modelled around about us. And last week, I encouraged each and every one of you to consider a connect group. Connect groups are a great way for you to receive prayer and encouragement, to spend time in God's word, but also to see how others are modeling Christ in their lives. And may that be an encouragement to you to know that you have somebody that you can look towards. Who are those people in your lives that reflect Christ? so well as a model of who he wants you to be. Perhaps we don't have Paul and his disciples here today, but we have God's word who, which gives us a model, an image of Christ. And then we have others who have been transformed by God's word that we can see, that light shining so brightly, that model of Christ which illuminates in their actions, in their words. They are incredible people and we should value them. What difference has God made in your life? What challenge have you been walking through and been led by Jesus out of? These are encouragements that we can make towards each other. We need to open our mouths and testify to God's goodness, his grace, his mercy, his power, his provision, his presence. In every area of our lives and especially here within our church family. We can encourage and inspire one another along not saying I've already attained this goal. Paul doesn't say that. He says I'm still like you. I'm pressing on towards the goal. But along the way God has taught me so much. 
God has shown me so much. What has God shown you that you can show towards others? We receive comfort, as God's word says. All comfort from God so that we then can, out of that comfort, comfort others. And that ultimately is that pouring out that I referred to. That as God then impresses things in our lives, changing us, challenging us, that pours out of us. It oozes out of us. And those people need to open their mouths and declare how good God is. Amen? Mm-hmm. Keep your eyes on the lookout for something that is of Jesus in other people. And just like Paul is reminding us, we need to emulate them as they are emulating Christ. Copy them as they are copying Christ. It stands out. It's different. And it's contagious. Open your mouths. Declare God's goodness, his grace, his mercy. Let others know about your experience of God. And it's out of that relationship. I want to know Christ more and more. That each week we can say, you know what? God turned up. You know what? God actually transformed me. You know what? I was in this difficulty and now all of a sudden I'm out of it. And God has delivered me. He has taken hold of me. I love that whole idea of Jesus taking hold of us. Jesus taking hold of us. And that's my question, perhaps as the band joins us on stage, that I would love to leave with you. Why did Jesus take a hold of you? Because Philippians 3.12 says, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. We are called. Jesus has taken a hold of us. When he took a hold of you, he took a hold of you for a reason. Our primary relationship, our primary call, our primary goal needs to be seeking relationship, relationship, relationship with Jesus. That's our primary call. And everything else follows from that. We have secondary calls corporately as a church to bring the hope that we have found, the future that we now have in Christ Jesus to others around about us. Outside these four walls, declaring God's goodness, His grace and His mercy. And we have individual calls. God has actually grown you selected you for a purpose there is nobody that can replace you at your workplace nobody that can replace you in your family nobody that can replace you you are individually called of Christ called to a purpose what is that For us to actually discover God's plans and his purposes over our lives, we need to be in position. Can I encourage you? Position yourself beside Jesus. And he will lead you. He will guide you. He will direct you. Sometimes people take surveys, you know. And I'm not saying surveys are bad. You work out all your gifts and you go, oh, I'm called to be this, that or the other. There's something better. There's a close walk with Jesus. And as we walk closer to Jesus, he will reveal day by day. Why am I going down to the shop at this time? Oh, I've just met this person. I haven't seen them in 10 years. I've never experienced that. I've got to go down to Bunnings and pick up some light bulbs. But, you know, I probably could do that another time in You feel the Holy Spirit say, no, do it now. Uh, 
and if I want to, I'm watching Netflix at the moment. Holy Spirit, can you just wait? I'll just finish this episode, truly. I'm not binging or anything. Hmm. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Tap, tap, Holy Spirit. Come on, hop in the car, go now. And it's not until you arrive do you actually realise there was somebody that I really needed to speak life into. Perhaps invite them along to one of our experiences here at Hope, maybe to your connect group, whatever that might be.